My name is Jeffrey Kennedy and welcome back to another episode of Elliott Wave Junctures. Today I want to talk about confusing price charts. And a confusing price chart is a price chart where the wave pattern is not initially or easily discernible. For example, in this price chart here of Decker, uh, Decker's Outdoor, ticker symbol DECK, I'm looking essentially at the move from this extreme here, the early January low, up to that late February high. Now, as you know, with a, a zigzag is a 5-3-5 pattern, five waves up in wave A, three waves down in wave B, followed by another five-wave structure. But this formation here is a little confusing because it's a bit large. What actually is the subdivision here? Very simply, it's this, waves A, and then we have a flat wave B. One, two, three, or A, B, C for A, A, B, C for B. Wave B ends at or near the origin of wave A, and then that's followed by a five-wave decline in wave C. Notice the small truncation because wave C actually should have ended below the extreme of wave A, and then that's actually a fo then followed by a five-wave move up in wave C. So this is a zigzag, five waves up in wave A, we have a flat wave B or a three-wave move down in wave B, and then we have another five-wave advance. It's important to remember whenever you're dealing with a confusing price chart that the wave pattern pattern or the wave principle is fractal. And what I mean by that is that wave patterns consist of larger and smaller versions of themselves. Let's take another look at another price chart here. This is the South African RAND and I'm simply looking at the price action from this extreme down to this extreme. Now it doesn't count nicely or doesn't initially visually see uh, appear as a, a straight zigzag or, or even a flag correction, but if you look more closely, you'll see that wave B of the formation in this instance here actually traced out an expanded flat. Three waves up in wave A, three waves down in wave B to a new extreme beyond the origin of wave A, followed by a five wave move up in wave C back beyond the extreme of wave A. Another example is recently here in the Euro. The move to the upside is clearly corrective, but what wave pattern does it actually fit? Again, the best way or the, my recommendation is, is to step back and break it down into patterns that you do recognize. So rather than looking at this price chart and trying to initially get an idea of what's in, what exactly is going on or, or what wave pattern does it best fit, sometimes it's best to simply step back and look at the actual segments and recognize the patterns that you do recognize and then join them together. If you can do that to this price chart here, I believe the uh, labeling that you'll walk away with is this, A with a triangle wave B followed by a wave C. The move to the upside, again, clearly corrective. We know the larger trend in this market is very much to the downside still. But with respect to the actual substructure, we can then break it apart and see that we have an A, triangle B, and a C. It's not uncommon for wave B of corrective wave patterns to be a little tricky and be complex. So again, Break them down into parts, waves A, waves B, and wave C. By doing so, I think you'll gain greater clarity with, uh, about the price chart, and your wave counting ability will indeed.